immersive shooting, we pick the most difficult set ever. Smoke, mirrors in every direction. Love it. Welcome to Twilight. You're listening to Another Bite of Twilight, a podcast where we look back on our obsession with the Twilight Saga and continue to freak out ten years later. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome. I'm. Oh, oh, you can go. <laughs> I'm Mel. I'm Kel. And this is another bite of Twilight. Yep. If you're just joining us, thank you for finding us and for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> it is. It is. So first we should say that we just get it out of the way. We are planning on taking a hiatus until August 11th, which yep. will be our first episode on Midnight Sun. Oh my god. This is something that we were originally intending to do just for the month of July, but with everything going on, we thought it would be kind of weird to come back and just do a regular episode. And then leave. And then leave. Yeah. T- talking about twilight everything feels so crazy right now in the world and Mm -hmm. it just seems really silly to talk about twilight yeah and i we've talked about having a hiatus just because we've never really taken a break i mean it's not going to be that long it's only like a month and a half or two months yeah um but i think it will be good to just refresh read all of our emails just you know get pumped up about it again and yeah i mean yeah. With everything going on, which we're going to talk about. Yes. Also, Mel is having issues with her dog at home and is going to go home. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Mel. I don't know upset you. <laughs> no. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a hard time. But I felt really torn about this, too, because I worried that people want maybe a distraction right now and something fun, you know, and maybe would want Twilight in the podcast. So I felt really conflicted about it and even talking about this but Mel how about you yeah Take me too I, I should say that we have a patreon and we know our lovely patreon listeners have already paid for the month of June yeah. so we're definitely going to honor that and we're going to do our patreon mini episodes yeah through this month and then we're going to put it on pause and so no one will be charged or anything for the time in which we're on hiatus but yeah it's I really I also feel conflicted because we know that this has been a really difficult past few months and people need an escape but Mm -hmm. I think this will be good (laughs) I feel bad that I'll miss you guys though but yeah we also wanted to talk just pretty candidly about everything that's going on right now you know in our patreon episode we kind of clumsily tried to address things but yeah by that we didn't really address it that no. much because we didn't really know what to say i know anybody who listened to that i'm sorry <laughs> i i don't know i didn't really want to which sounds bad but i my reasoning for it was i don't know i felt i told mel that i felt like classic imposter syndrome in a way i just felt like mm-hmm. this is a twilight podcast like who are we to talk about that and i didn't want to tell anyone to do anything or you know i just felt very uncomfortable about it But I gave it some thought, and this is turning out to be so historical and obviously so important culturally. Not even just here. I mean, there have been protests in, like, 18 countries. So if, like, something so big as this, like a second civil rights movement almost, it's like, yeah, yeah, we're our podcast is going on right now, but it's also occurring at the same time. So yeah, what's wrong with bringing it up? Yeah. It's... And I was just saying to Kelly, it's kind of awkward to talk about or it's difficult because we know that we have listeners of all races. So it's like, who are we really speaking to right now? Like, we are two white girls. Yeah. So, you know, we know that, like, uh, we still have a lot to learn. And so we can't really, you know, act like we are these experts on uh, issues where we sort of need to take a step back and Mm -hmm. be the listeners Ooh, it's starting to rain. It's starting to rain. Very twilight. Very twilight. That. I'm, I hope that will cut in the recording. <laughs> yeah. We're in the car right now, actually. Yeah, we figured that that would sound better. I hope sound it sounds better. good. I know. I recorded once in the car. I don't know if I ever said it. It was the Jacob episode. 
Yeah. That sounded good. But anyway, as you were saying. Oh, well, so I wanted to say to our listeners, because we know that we have many listeners who are black or people of color, and so Mm -hmm. we want to say that we love you, we're here for you, we stand with you, and we're here to listen to you. Yeah. Um, And then to our white listeners, I guess, wanted to say that I think that it's, this is a very important time, Mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility to make sure that we are just as attentive and just as active in this movement beyond when it stops trending. I think it's kind of easy to jump on the bandwagon because everybody else is talking about it, but we really have to make sure that this moment lasts, you know, beyond just this podcast, beyond like social media. We have to really do the work to make sure that we are... um, holding each other accountable and being accountable mm-hmm. for ourselves. True, now. Yeah. I agree. Hmm. Yeah. It's hard. It's, I realize that, I mean, I'm, everyone knows what we're talking about, but I don't know, just in case someone listens to this like 20 years from now, I don't even know. Oh yeah, we're possible. talking about the Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> yeah. After the horrible, disgusting death of George Floyd. Yes, yes. I'm sure everyone listening will know, but yeah. I don't know, I just felt the need to explain yeah i don't know you never know i know i know someone might be listening like wait what are they talking about (laughs) years from now (laughs) yeah but maybe not i mean we keep saying this is gonna be in history books and yeah everything which i think it will but yeah i wanted to say i mean it's because you know we feel like we know you guys but we don't really know where everybody stands on things who are our listeners and so i just want to be honest and say that, you know, if we do have listeners who, like, maybe don't get it or maybe, you know, are white and just, like, don't don't really understand the movement, I'll be honest and say five years ago when the Ferguson protests were happening, yeah. I was in that position where, you know, I ex- considered myself progressive and very, uh, I thought I was anti-racist, but at the yeah. same time when all this was going on, I didn't really understand, you know, there were protests in Boston and I thought to myself, well, why is this happening here? Like, that didn't, that event didn't happen here. Like, why are you protesting the police in Boston? In my philosophy class, I literally, I think I raised my hand and said things like, you know, not all cops or all lives yeah. matter. And I came from a place of privilege where I didn't really understand why that wasn't productive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being white, I never had to experience anyone ever being suspicious of me because of my, because of my skin color. And right. I came from a town where... Um, it was predominantly white and people didn't really talk about race. And so that was my privilege showing and making myself, um, I guess my discomfort for something I didn't really relate to Yeah, coming forward. I get it. I felt the same way. I, when the Black Lives Matter movement started, I thought it was important, but I also felt like I wasn't really part of it or like I wasn't supposed to be part of it or something like I even I went to a Black Lives Matter rally thing and I just felt like awkward like I shouldn't be there or something but I feel like that's yeah like you said not productive and not true Mm -hmm. I mean just because it's not about you doesn't mean you can't get involved or care yeah whatever so yeah I didn't get that though a few years ago so but I think it's so important and honorable to recognize that you have grown and that opinions have changed or you've learned something new. True. And that's what I'm really enjoying right now about this time. However crazy it is, is I feel like everybody is sharing really helpful resources and teaching each other. Um, especially white people. I feel like it's our responsibility to teach each other. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we don't want to we as white people, I'm talking about ourselves. <laughs> we don't want to exhaust people who have been experiencing this for their entire lives. Like, we need yeah. to do the work. I know. I agree. Yeah. Why should they? Like, why should we have everything just handed to us? Yeah, exactly. Including how to deal with racism. Like, what? I saw a thing online that was like, it is a privilege to learn about racism instead of experience it. True. Which really spoke yeah. to me. I mean, there's, that's something I've learned this week is, um, 
you know, no matter how, as a white person, no matter how woke you think you are or progressive, yeah. you, there's always more you can learn. And I think that even with speaking out, it's so important. Sometimes you might say the wrong thing and people might correct you and that's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. It's better than saying nothing. Mm-hmm. I know. <sighs> yeah. I was trying to think of how this can relate to Twilight in yeah. any way. And I was thinking about... You know, in in all parts of our different communities that we have in any way, we have the opportunity to speak up on these things, unfortunately, mm-hmm. that we are given the need to speak up on these things. But in the Twilight community, I remember the horrible racism that FKA Twigs oh, yeah. um, was experiencing. Because she dated Robert Pattinson. yeah. I know, and it's really, it was so upsetting to see that, and I feel like it still happens. Yeah. Like, on her Instagram, and yeah, you might think, like, oh, she's a celebrity, who cares, but, I mean, imagine being a black girl and seeing those comments. Yeah, exactly. It's not just about FK Twigs, and even, and she is a person, you know? Yeah. It's not, it doesn't matter that she's famous, um. Yeah. And yeah, that's, like, our community, quote, is Twilight fans. And it's just upsetting to see that. I mean, I I doubt anyone listening did that. I wouldn't believe that. But, like, you know, even if you did something years ago that was not so great, I've said bad things in the past. You might, I have, feel, like, defensive of yourself, of your past self. Like, mm-hmm. ashamed, maybe, but don't want to admit it. And so you're still, like, holding on to that defensiveness but yeah. like you can forgive yourself and move on and you know do better like even if you were raised this years ago like you can always change so yeah yeah I agree and I feel like I don't know there's always been you know we love Twilight like come on it's yeah. our lives but there's always been some weird stuff with race in Twilight yeah but a hundred percent I mean it's getting better like the fact that people even notice now I mean it came out the book 2005 like a lot has changed mm-hmm. but yeah I mean even just the fact that like pretty much everyone's white and yeah Alice Japanese thing like there's always been yeah I mean weird there's stuff. only really one or I guess there's two black characters but mm-hmm. one Laurent he's a, a bad guy <laughs> And then... At first he seemed good, but then he was bad. Yeah, and then Tyler, he was sadly not brought back in the other yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, and I think it's good to speak out on those issues because, I mean, even if it's just a movie, you might think that's bigger than yourself, but I guess with social media and everything, we have this platform to, if we recognize something, we can say something. But that doesn't mean... You can't like Twilight. Obviously. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just, you know, thinking about moving past that with new art and mediums and stuff. Like, yeah. Twilight was great. We love it. We're still talking about it. It's still going on, Midnight Sun. But, you know, we already had stories like this about all white people, so. Yeah. It can evolve. I wonder if Stephanie recognizes and regrets that now. Maybe. I mean, or not just Stephanie. I mean, it doesn't just fall on her. It's also the casting directors and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she, I mean, is somewhat responsible for (laughs) it, but. Yeah. I don't know. (sighs) Yeah. It's tough. And like, we just wanted to say that we're here for you, you know, emotionally, spiritually. Um, Yeah. We love all of our listeners and like. Whatever you've been doing, how you've been feeling lately, whether you've been protesting or just kind of reading the news or whatever, like, we, we're in this together. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to say one thing that is important to me Mm -hmm. is that, you know, you can't really be for, I consider myself a feminist, you can't be a feminist and also not a part of the fight for racial equality and you can't be a feminist and also not for gay rights because all of these things are interconnected because you know we have women of color Mm -hmm. trans women of color gay people of color 
it's all connected, you know? So if you're fighting for one thing, you you have to fight for everything. I guess I don't know what else to say, but <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you know? I, I'm not usually particularly eloquent about these things. It is hard. As a speaker, I'm more a writer, but... Um, don't you host a podcast? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I really, I also want to say that this summer I really am going to try to, I see like all these lists of books to read to further educate yourself on these things, mm. especially as a white person. So I'm going to commit myself to that this summer. It's cool now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I also, I don't know. I hope this, <laughs> this was comforting maybe to some people or I don't know I was worried that people wouldn't want to hear this in a way you know because we're two white girls no because it's the twilight podcast oh yeah I don't know I didn't know if it would upset anybody if that's what they were looking for this week or something you know yeah but I also don't really care okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean I just think some things transcend yeah that and on the one hand, people want a distraction, but at the same time, people of color and black people especially, you know, they can't distract themselves from it. So I think that it's good that everybody, this is on everybody's minds right now because it's long overdue. Mm-hmm. I agree. Well, do you have any more points to make? Um, I don't. Or any more notes? I don't think so. I do want to say that it makes me sad. I feel like going on hiatus, like school's out for the summer or something. I know, it is sad. But we'll be back, and I do, I want to say that and we know this has been such a difficult time, so we hope all of you guys are, um, you know, checking in with yourselves, um, being kind to yourselves, because we've all been cooped up in our houses. and Yeah, it's crazy. It's a very anxious time, no matter who you are. Yes. It's absolutely nuts. Yeah. I know. I feel sad having a hiatus. Yeah. It's weird. Mm. If you guys are bored, li- listen to our old episodes. Yeah. I'm going to do that, I think. I think. I don't know. I need a refresher. <laughs> On our old episodes? Our, yeah. Yeah. And just our podcast in general. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, guys, I know it sucks. I hope you don't hate us for going on a hiatus, yeah. but I think it's going to be beneficial. I think you know? so, too. I think creative-wise. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, so by the time we're back, too, we will know what's up with Forever Twilight and Forks Festival. The F- Festival in Forks. Yes. Um, which we are, we're planning on going to, but, yeah, we still don't know if it's still happening because of coronavirus, but... Once we have the next episode, we'll know. And we'll we'll announce it probably yeah. on social media and stuff like that if you use it. Yeah, I'll still be posting on social media. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Throughout. Maybe I will too. <laughs> well, Stephanie has been <laughs> releasing these quotes from oh, yeah. the night we sun. To talk about that. We didn't bring our phones into the car, so we don't have Wi Fi to read the quotes. Yeah. <laughs> we but messed up. They were really great. I know. It's cool. <laughs> Did you read the second one? No, I actually didn't. Oh, it's about Alice and, like, her oh, really? visions. What the heck? Yeah, they it. have, like, a very pretty uh, little design, which doesn't mm-hmm. really make sense because... Yeah, but the book cover is so gory. It's supposed to be gory, and then it's making the pomegranate <laughs> look just, like, so oh, cute. cutesy and artsy. Yeah, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, but the first one... I feel like... I'm trying to just remember what the gist of it was. Edward was kind of saying... What? Was it something like that he knew she w- he wasn't good for her? Or what was he saying? I can't it's remember. like him acknowledging that he knew it wasn't healthy. Oh, Being his, yeah, her yeah. first romantic experience. Yes. That was really interesting to me. And I don't remember that. I don't remember it draft, either. So I, I wonder think if that's new. It would be dumb if any of the quotes she releases are from the draft. <laughs> oh, hey, you guys have seen that before? <laughs> I know. That would be so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the opening line. Yeah. Um, we've seen this. <laughs> I wonder how different it's going to be. Gosh. I know. This I, is going to be amazing. I loved the draft, but I also hope it's 
a little bit different. Yeah, that'll be cool. Just so it's, you know, new content. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I saw some girl, I think it was on Tumblr, or I don't know. And guys, I'm so sorry if you follow us on Tumblr. I literally never go on it. I am so sorry about that. It's hard. I think I have it automated that our episodes post, but besides that, I haven't... (laughs) I just never go on Tumblr. But anyway, I saw this girl was like, oh, I guess now's a good time to say that years ago I printed out the whole book and had it professionally bound. Oh and my she god. Had a book. It was Midnight Sun. I mean it wasn't that thick. It was probably like an inch. I believe that's illegal. But, yeah, probably. <sighs> but and it looked great. It had like a cover. It was the cover with the red sun over water. Mm-hmm. And the text was small. As we we're hoping it will change to be. And yeah, I thought it was funny. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, you mean the, yeah on the cover? Yeah. On yeah. Her I also hope cover. that the text inside is pretty small, so that way it's even more content. <laughs> content. No, no, I hate that word. <laughs> okay, even writing. more literature. writing literature. <laughs> but no, I'm a content writer. I'm so I excited. Yeah, yeah, it'll I hope be. You guys don't think of our podcast as content. Content. It is content. No. It's art. It's. A radio show. It's a podcast. <laughs> it is a They're podcast. episodes with love in them. Yeah. Content to me, again, I know it's my job, but it just sounds like filler. Yeah, I agree. It's like we, clickbait like just and to, just put content, content out. Yeah, content. <laughs> like a YouTuber. I just mean produce new content. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. That's not us. No. So yeah, it'll be really nice that when we come back, it'll be Midnight Sun. That is, we can freak out. again, so great that Stephanie yeah. did that. It's something nice yeah. to look forward to. And then, yeah, I don't know about the festival. I mean, normally I think after Midnight Sun, we would be heading to the festival. had a bunch of coverage about the festival. But if not, you know, we still have more topics. We still have to talk about Kristen Stewart. Um, People have been sending us a lot of suggestions, which is yeah. really helpful. Yeah, we've um, had a lot. Of course, life and death someday. More commentary in the commentary. You know, we have a ton of topics. So yeah. That w- will be when we come back after Midnight Sun. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't want anyone to think that it's over once we cover Midnight Sun. No, 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 no. There's no, so no, much. No, 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 Maybe no, no. we can do a Robson Part 3 if we get back together. <laughs> <laughs> Should I have said that? <laughs> I don't know. Happened. <laughs> I actually did see an article that said Rob and Suki are like they never fight. Someone's I think someone sent it to us. Oh my gosh. Must be great. Thank you for sending that to us. Yeah. Never fight? Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't think he's getting back with Kristen. No. But I'm happy for them. Yeah. We're happy for you. Yeah. That's another thing is I also wanted to say within our you know, community mm-hmm. since it's Pride Month especially, people are I often in the Twilight community see things online too that are incredibly homophobic towards Kristen Stewart, <gasps> and it's like on the one hand I don't know it's like yeah do we do we call every single person out I I sometimes feel like we have mm-hmm. a responsibility to at the very least that people should know what's wrong they can't just say things unchecked mm-hmm. but sometimes it is a lot but I think yeah. we should let people know that hey that's not acceptable it's very weird to see that oh it's horrible. It's just surprising to me. Yeah. What the heck? I think someone... You know what? Like, if you are a fan of Twilight and you're going to be homophobic towards Kristen Stewart, then just don't be a fan of Twilight because she's the face of it. And yeah, if you have a problem with that, don't watch it. Yeah. True. Again, I doubt it's any of you guys listening. Yeah. Because everyone's always been so sweet to us, and I just can't imagine that. Yeah. Everyone but if you did do with. that... Shame on you. Yeah. And think about that. Just think about it. Just think about it. <laughs> think about it. Know that we are judging you. <laughs> judging you, but hoping you... Hoping you change. Come to terms with that. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. I know. I can't... Uh, I won't get back into it. I just can't believe it. Mm-hmm. And Kristen loves Twilight. Like, don't do that to her. I know. She's so into it. Even if she wasn't, but, I mean... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I go way too back and forth with, like, every... <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I just meant, even if 
you don't have to be a Twilight fan to earn respect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know, it's, it's hard to talk about these things and also, yeah. like, blend Twilight into it. Mm-hmm. And, I'm sorry. Well, I was thinking about it, you know, you can't really separate... I don't know, like, movies that came out in the 60s and stuff when a lot of movements were going on. You can't... Even if it had nothing to do with it, really, like, every movie that came out back then, every show, every song, even if it's not about it, it's just from that time, you know? So... Yeah. You know, Twilight's still going on, and it's part of this modern age, and it's always going to be remembered as this time in the 2000s, 2010s, now 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty long. Pretty long... Yeah. Out of decades. <laughs> yeah. Of Twilight. Well, it came out in 20, 2005, 2005, right? Yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. It's still going. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, times change, and so when Twilight's coming along with it, we're all still into it, and so... Yeah. In an abstract way, it makes sense to me. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I think I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Twilight isn't about it, but it's a reflection of our times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's in the same time capsule. Yes. For now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I feel optimistic. I feel like maybe everything is happening for a reason, you know, yeah. with coronavirus. I mean... It's really unfortunate that we've had this pandemic, and yeah. obviously, incredibly sad. People have died. Yeah, it's horrible. I get what you're saying, though. <laughs> so I don't want to say that like it's a good thing, yeah. but because people have been home, especially, I feel like they don't have their distractions mm-hmm. to just look away from these things, which a lot of people, you know, it's sometimes too easy to do if something makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel optimistic that people are paying attention. People who I, unfortunately, never even expected to. Mm-hmm. And so I just hope and pray that it lasts and we see it through. I think also as white people too, we have to, when speaking out on these things, which is tough because we are literally speaking out on this right now, Yeah. we have to make sure that our voices are not louder than the voices of black people and people of color right now. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like on social media especially, I'm seeing some of the loudest voices in this movement are white, so much so that I forget that they are white. And so <laughs> we, we can't let our activism be us trying to prove that we're not racist. Yeah, you know? I know. See, I feel so weird about it. I don't know. I was nervous to come off that way, too, like that we're looking for attention or trying to prove something. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we're fine. Like, we're not even white, because look at us. Like, Yeah, we're the good guys. We're the good white guys. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying all white people are bad or anything. Like, I don't want anyone listening to think we're, like, attacking you. Well, we I, literally are white, so. I know, I know, I know. But that's what I'm saying is people yeah. literally act that way. They're like, all of you fucking suck, but I'm good. And yeah. Like, no. Yeah. I don't, I hate when people act that way, so I don't want to come off that way yeah. either. Because I think it really starts <laughs> from within. Yeah. No matter, like I said, like no matter how woke you are, there's always more work you could be doing, more you could be learning because... You can still be an asshole, even if you're, quote, woke. Yeah, exactly. So. And... Yeah. Uh, so I think, like, it's good that, I think that people are saying this online, but yeah. to know that we still have to hold ourselves accountable, even if we think that we are. Yeah. Just think, like, is this really helpful? Yeah, I saw people yeah. saying that, like, especially if you're posting online, like, what is the purpose of this? Is it to educate? Yeah. Or is it to just, like, give yourself a badge of honor of, mm-hmm. like, I stand with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm-hmm. which I do think is, is good to show solidarity. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I think you guys have made me know what we mean, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. It's a fine, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, is it is it for yourself or is it for the movement? I just love you guys. I'm so grateful mm-hmm. and still amazed that people have listened to this podcast it's crazy to me. I just never really expected it. And 
yeah, I just feel indebted to all of you. Me too. And just want you to know that we care, even though we don't know you personally. Um, you guys feel like our friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it has been so amazing for us. Like, you know, we could be having a horrible day. Yeah. And then we just get a message, and it totally turns our whole day around. Mm-hmm. Um, just knowing that people are out there who are listening to what we have to say, mm-hmm. it makes us feel less lonely. Yeah, you know. And it's, it's just crazy, all, all about Twilight. But I think it goes even beyond that a little bit. You know? Yeah, I think so too. I think... <laughs> I think that, you know, with all the vitriol that Twilight received, yeah. to have formed this connection with so many of you, and, you know, we recognize that we... Wait, let me start that over, because what okay. I said it. With so Sounded many... me. <laughs> so many of you. <laughs> we've formed this connection with so many of you, and it's so great that it's people of all ages, people yeah. of all races, yeah. people... All genders. All genders and people from all over the world share in this thing together. And it... It's nuts. It's crazy. We never would have thought that we would have had something Mm -hmm. like this. I never thought. (sighs) Yeah. Well, we hope you guys have an amazing summer until we meet back up with you guys again to talk about Midnight Sun. We love you. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you are staying safe and you are having a great summer. Did I say that? (laughs) (laughs) And let's get hyped for Midnight Sun. Yeah. This is all we've dreamt of. It's happening. It's insane. I mean, that is like, 2020 has been a crazy year, but the fact that Midnight Sun is coming out, it like makes it even crazier. Like, what the hell? (laughs) Mm -hmm. This is kind of, you know, wildest dreams. Wildest dreams. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, love you guys. Don't grab a plane to catch, but stay strong and reach out to us. Yeah. Another by Twilight at gmail.com. <laughs> and we'll be back. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. Contact us at anotherbiteoftwilight at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at anotherbiteoftwilight. The music is by Traces. See you next time.